Hey friends, it's Cory from Hey Let's Make Stuff, back with another Illustrator tutorial. This is the fourth video in this series on learning to create SVGs using Adobe Illustrator, and I'm so glad you're here. If you're new to this series, I recommend going back and starting with the first video, which is about the workspace. Each video builds on the next, and if you start with this video, you might be a little confused. In last week's video, we learned how to make a simple SVG using text, and this week's video will build on that, learning about more text tools and techniques that you can use to make your SVG files really unique. As always, I recommend that you use keyboard shortcuts. I will be using them in this video. If you need a keyboard shortcut printout, I have one here available for you for free. It has all of my favorite keyboard shortcuts for SVG design and nothing else you don't need. Are you ready to dive in? Let's head into Illustrator. Before we get started, make sure to read the terms of service of any fonts that you're going to use. There are a handful of font designers and sites that don't allow for much manipulation of their fonts beyond sort of the basic, you know, resizing. I mean, you want to make sure that you're following their terms so that you don't get into legal trouble. Most font designers, however, will allow you to make a lot, if not all, of the changes that I'm doing in this video. One panel we haven't talked about yet is the character panel. If you don't already have this open in the panels menu over here on the right, you can go to Window, Type, Character, and if you need to, you can drag and drop it into this panels menu. Now, this has a lot of the things that we are using in other parts of Illustrator. A lot of these things will also exist in the Properties panel over here on the right. Once you have a font selected, it will also be up here in the Control panel when you have a font selected. But one of the things that this panel has that you can't find in those other areas is it also opens the Open Type um, panel as well. So you can see here, Open Type, I can open that panel, and we will use this later in this video. So I just want to make sure you have the access here to this character panel and the open type panel. I just opened up a file that we're going to make later in this video, but I wanted to talk about saving SVGs. So for all of the examples that I'm going to go through in this video, I'm not going to tell you how to save these as SVGs because we did that in the last video. So if you need to go back and watch that. Um, and for that, I just made a single compound path for the single word I had in my SVG. Now you could select all of this and turn it into a single compound path and it would cut just like this all as one piece. Or you could select select, say, friends, family, and choose, and make those a compound path so they cut on one mat. Or you could select the Artha and the we and make those a compound path, a different compound path. And that way, friends, family, and choose would cut in one color, and then you could cut Artha, we in another color. It really just depends on how you want to make your SVG. Next week, we're going to be talking about color, and that goes beyond just making your SVGs look better, um, but it also helps you create layers in your SVGs um, as far as the way you want people to cut them. So for today, we're just going to use black and all the SVGs that we make, but next week we're going to do that deeper dive into color um, and we will talk about how that affects the layers. And then again, make sure that you're opening up that layers panel and checking for any problems. Again, I talked about this last week, so if you're not sure what I'm talking about, go ahead and watch that video first. This is the first file we're going to use. For all of the fonts that I'm using in this video, please click on the blog post link and I will link to all of the fonts that I'm using in case you look at one and you're like, I've got to have it. Um, I will have all of those linked in the blog post. First, we're going to talk about letter spacing. So I have two separate text boxes here. I've got one that says summer and one that says state of mind. And letter spacing changes the spacing between each letter of your text box evenly. This can change the overall look and feel of your design, plus allow you to make your fonts the size you want them without having to skew or stretch that aspect ratio. So if you need to fit a certain space, you can increase or maybe even decrease the letter spacing to get it to fit. That's a good way to do it instead of actually skewing your aspect ratio. Together, this looks okay, but I wouldn't say it looks great. The top and bottom lines are competing against each other for attention, and that bottom font is a little bit boring. But if I choose my selection tool, which is keyboard shortcut V, and then I choose stay of mine so it's selected, I can then change the letter spacing of this particular set of words. And like I said, Illustrator has so many ways to do the same thing. So you can change the letter spacing up here under character, you can change it over here in the properties panel, and you can change it in that character panel which we opened earlier. I'm going to use the character panel because that's what I have open, and I'm going to use this bottom right selector. Now if you hover over it, it will say tracking. Tracking is just another word for letter spacing. I just figured most of my audience knows letter spacing more than they know tracking. So tracking, letter spacing, same thing. And here you can increase the letter spacing for state of mind. So I'm going to go ahead and click in here and I'm going to choose 200. And you can see that it really spaced out my letters here. So I'm going to go ahead and close this character panel. Now I'm going to hold down the shift key and resize my uh, text box here just using that bounding box. I'm going to try and get it to be about the same size as summer. Then if you compare it to what we had before, you can see that it is a more successful design. There's more breathing room between the letters and the word summer stands out more. 
It's the same font there on the bottom, but with the letter spacing, it looks unique and more visually pleasing. You want to make sure to do any letter spacing or tracking changes before your font is outlined. Once it's outlined, you won't have access to this tool anymore. While letter spacing spaces all of the letters evenly, next up we're going to talk about kerning, and kerning is adjusting the space between two letters to make them more visually appealing. Whether or not you'll have to kern your letters will really depend on the font. Some designers are really good at kerning their letters and some are not, um, so you'll really have to just take a look at it visually and see whether or not you want to make any changes. Let's take a look at this example of a boat life file. You may think this looks okay, but from my designer eye, I can see that there is just too much spacing over here in between the A and the T and the O and the A. Like over here between the L and the I and the F, it's, you know, looks pretty good, but over here it just looks like there is way too much space between these letters. To kern, you'll want to click into your font here, and you'll want to place your cursor between two letters. Then let's open up that character panel again, and kerning is over here on the bottom left. You can see here it says set the kerning between two characters. So I've done this before, so I know that I want this set at negative 117. So much better. It visually looks like it matches the L and the I and the F over here. You want to make sure you're using a negative number to decrease the space. Sometimes you may need to use a positive number. Sometimes letters are sort of crammed together and you want to give them a little bit more breathing room. You can use a positive number here in the kerning box and it will space out your letters more. So that is the correct and proper way to kern. And I do that if I have to kern maybe one or two letters. But if you're finding that your kerning is kind of a mess, but you know that your phrase is how you'd like it, you can outline your fonts. So I'm going to click escape to get out of the text box and then I'm going to use the outline shortcut which is shift command O on a Mac or shift control O on a PC and that will outline my font. Now I can double click on my letters and move them individually. So let's say I want to move this O a little closer. I can use the keys on my keyboard to move things closer and I can move my A over a little bit and then if I hold down the shift key I can move them in larger increments. Now life is like floating way over here so I'm going to scoot it over I might move these just a hair closer together, just like this, just so that they look visually like they all go together properly. Now, if I compare that to what we had before, you can really see where we had all of that extra space, all of this white space that we just didn't need. The bottom version just looks so much better than the top version because it's been kerned. Next up, let's talk about different ways to resize your text. So I have three different text boxes here, and you'll notice that I tend to work in different text boxes just because I find it so much easier to then edit single parts of an SVG versus having to work with a text box that has multiple lines in it. It's just much more difficult. So generally, I use a lot of different text boxes just because I find it easier. So in the last video, I taught you a few ways to resize your text. You can go up here and choose a point size or type in a point size that you might want, or you can use the bounding box to resize by clicking on the corner and holding down the shift key. But if I want all of my lines to be the same width, which is a very popular way to make SVGs, I have a third way that I'll resize my text. So I have my three different text boxes here. I could try and resize them using those other methods, but instead I'm actually going to outline everything. So I'm going to use that shift command O or shift control O to outline my fonts. And that leaves me with three separate images for my text. This allows me to resize them independently. Now I could again use the bounding box, but it's very easy for me just to type in a number up here. So let's say we're gonna make all of these six inches wide. Boom, we've got six inches for this one. We're gonna type in six inches for this one. It's almost six inches. Let's make it a little bit smaller and then I'm gonna type in six inches for this one. And now all three of my lines are the same exact width. Now you can select all and then use this align center tool up here. It also exists over here in the um, properties panel and that aligns them perfectly. You then might want to space your lines a little bit better. So I'm going to use the arrow keys on my keyboard just to nudge these a little bit closer together. But there you have it. This SVG now has three lines that are exactly the same size. I use this method to make SVG files all the time, and I just find it so much faster than resizing using those other methods. Next, let's talk about rotating text. Sometimes I feel like I can't get a pleasing layout for an SVG with the words that I have. You know, I try resizing them, I try changing fonts, but I just can't can't quite get there. And so one other method I use sometimes is rotating fonts. Right now I have two text boxes and no matter what I did, I couldn't get this to look good. So I'm actually going to split this into a bunch of text boxes and you have to do this manually, but I'm going to do bows in one and bling, it's a in one box, cheer and thing. So basically I will go and I will just remove what I've got using copy and paste 
so that everything is in its own text box. So now I have everything in its own text box. I have its A in its own text box here, even though it's two words, but they're gonna go together in my final design. Again, I'm gonna select all and I'm gonna outline my text. You can use that keyboard shortcut I've been using. Again, you can also use create outlines over here in the properties panel. Now each of my words will be separate except for its and a, which I have together. Now to make my file, I'm going to start with bows and I'm gonna bring it down here and I'm gonna put bling right under it. And you'll see these little pink lines appear. Those pink lines are letting you know that you have lined things up properly. Now I can resize these using that same method I used above, but for this one, I'm just going to resize using the bounding box to try and get it about the size I need it to be to be the same size as bows. And then I'm going to take and and I'm going to rotate it. So if you hover over the corner of your bounding box, you'll see this little rotate arrow. And if you click and hold down shift, you can rotate. If you don't hold down shift, you won't get the uh, increments, but if you hold down shift, you'll get exactly 90 degrees. Then I'm gonna go ahead and line it up here and make it smaller, just like this. Then I'm going to choose cheer and I'm gonna put it here, make it a little bit smaller and I'll put thing right under it just like that. And then I'm gonna choose its A and I'm gonna rotate that as well. And I'm gonna put it right here and I'm gonna resize it. I'm having a hard time getting it to be the right size. So I'm actually going to zoom in. Sometimes that helps. Now I can line it up with the bottom of thing and I can move it over a little bit here. I feel like I could make this just a hair bigger, just like this, and then make this just a little bit bigger. Now, if I zoom back out, you can see that I've got bows, bling, cheer, and thing emphasized because they're going the correct way. And then and and its A are less emphasized because they are rotated. I would definitely add some color to this bottom SVG to make it pop a little bit more, but you can see from what we started with to what we ended up with, it is a much more successful design. Like in the last example, sometimes you wanna emphasize important words and downplay others. This is hard to do when you're using all of the same font in the same size. So in this example, friends are the family we choose, it's a little hard to read because are the and we are just the same size as friends, family, and choose, which are the more important words. Again, I have this in five separate text boxes just to make it easier to work with. So if I choose the words are and the, and to go up here to the control panel and choose a different font, I'm gonna choose a font called Aquabella here, and then I make it much smaller just like this. And then I want to do the same as we. I could go up there and choose the same font and resize it. But if I select the we, and then I click on I, I will get the eyedropper. And the eyedropper is sort of a copying tool. And then I click over here on Artha, it will automatically match what I had selected to what I choose with the eyedropper. It's so much faster than going up to the font dropdown, definitely something I use a lot. Now I can go ahead and sort of nest these together just like this. I can select everything and I can see how centering it looks. See, I don't love how these run together. So I'm gonna move family over and I'm gonna move our the over just a bit. But overall, you can see that this is just so much better than what we started with. It's much more readable and the correct words stand out. I'm not gonna go into how to pair fonts in this tutorial because it's already long enough, but I do have a mini e-course that I will link um, down in the description. It's called Fun With Fonts and it goes into a lot about pairing fonts. So if you're interested in knowing which fonts go together and which ones definitely don't, go ahead and grab that mini e-course. It's only $6. Next up, let's talk about moving individual letters. So this is one of my favorite kind of spooky Halloween fonts. It's called Mitus. I will go ahead and link it in that blog post but I don't feel like this is the best version of it. I feel like the T and the R especially, they just don't look great together. And I feel like we need a little bit more movement to this whole thing. So I'm gonna use my selection tool and then I'm gonna use create outlines. And now I can move the letters individually. So I'm gonna zoom in here so I have a little bit more to work with. And I'm going to double click each letter and I'm gonna move them in different ways here to try and get a more pleasing look to my words here. Move this guy up. Maybe move, let's see. So for over here in trick, I have the T at the bottom and the R sort of above it. I'm gonna switch these here, put the T above the R, bring my E up, bring my A up, maybe bring this T down. Now, if we zoom out and I compare it to the version we had at the top, to the version I created here on the bottom, I think the bottom version is just more successful. Here, everything was sort of sitting on that same baseline, but here we have a lot of um, variation and it just looks a little 
creepier and cooler for Halloween. And then you might be wondering what happens if you find a font you like, but you know that those um, lines in the font are just going to be too thin to cut well on your cutting machine. You can actually increase the stroke, the, sort of the outline of the font, just a little bit to make it easier to cut. So in this case, I have this beautiful font, but you know, you may be able to use it on a really large project, but these very thin strokes in the font are just not going to cut very well. So let's add a stroke to our project. If you remember from the previous lessons, I talked about how the fill is the color that the inside of our image is. So in this case, it's black. And then the stroke is the outline. Right now, up here in the control panel, you can see that I have a black fill and an empty stroke. You can see that also over here in the toolbar. So I'm going to add a black stroke, and it will automatically add a one point stroke. And honestly, I think this is probably good enough. You can make it go a little higher, but two feels a little thick for this font. Let's try one and a half. You can actually type in a non round number here. Okay, I think this looks good. Now we will outline our font like we have before. I'm just gonna go ahead and click Create Outlines in the Properties panel. And if I click off of it, we think it looks good. But when I click on it, we realize that we still have a black fill with a black stroke. So if I zoom in, you can see here that the blue line is our actual font and it has this black outline around it and that is our stroke. If we uploaded it as is, it would not show that stroke at all and it would look just like the regular font. So I'm gonna select my font here and then I'm going to go up to Object Expand. And this basically expands my fill and my stroke to be actual shapes. You wanna make sure both fill and stroke are checked and then click OK. Now if I zoom in, you'll see that basically it has outlined my stroke. Close the character panel and I'm gonna open that pathfinder and I'm going to unite. This makes this whole thing one piece. If you tried to unite before doing the expand, it would still have the stroke. But you can see here now that I have a black fill and no stroke because that stroke has become part of the fill. And now if you look at it compared to the one we started with, you can see that it will cut better because the lines have been thickened. Another fun way to use text in your SVG files is to type text on a circle. And if you'll remember from some of the last videos, the keyboard shortcut for a circle is L. So I'm gonna choose L and then I'm gonna hold down the shift key and draw my circle. Again, if you don't hold down that shift key, it will change your aspect ratio. And you can do this on an oval if you'd like, but I prefer to start with a perfect circle. Now we're going to use the type on a path tool. So I'm going to go over here to the text tool in the toolbar, and I'm going to press and hold it down so it shows me this menu with these other tools. And I'm going to choose type on a path tool. Now you can put this anywhere on this path, and honestly it can be a little bit tricky. I'm never quite sure where I want to put it. So in this case, I'm going to find that bottom anchor point, and I'm going to click. This is going to fill it with that lorem ipsum filler text, but obviously you can change it to whatever you like. So I'm going to change it to, you are my sunshine. And I'm gonna do it twice because I want it to kind of fill the whole circle and I don't want my text to be big. And then I'm gonna change the font to this font. And then you can increase the size of your font to sort of fill your circle here, just like that. Now, normally when I was doing this design, I would put something in the middle here, like a sunshine in this case. And then if you select it, you can click on that bounding box and rotate it. So if it started somewhere you're not particularly happy with, Maybe I want you are your sunshine going across the top and then down on the bottom. You can do that. There are actually lots of options for this sort of type on a path tool. I can't go into all of them here just because there are so many, but if you're interested in doing more like this, you can definitely Google and see how many different things you can do with this particular tool. Next up, we are going to use that same tool, but we're going to type it on a path that's not a circle. And this is going to be our first taste of using that pen tool. So I'm going to go ahead and have you click P for pen. And this gives you the pen tool. I'm gonna to be going into a whole tutorial on how to use the pen tool because it can be very intimidating, um, but I think we should get started with it. So to start, you wanna make sure that you have an empty fill and a colored stroke. So this is sort of opposite of what we've been doing. So right now you can see I have black as my fill over here and I've got an empty stroke. Now to easily switch them, I can just click this little arrow and now I have an empty fill and a black stroke. Use the pen tool and click to add an anchor point. And you can see now that that anchor point has a path coming off of it. I'm just going to create sort of a little zigzag line by clicking. It does not need to be perfect. This is just getting us kind of used to using that pen tool. To get out of the pen tool, you can click Escape or V to get back to that selection tool. Now we're going to use the anchor point tool. We touched on this when we were doing the paths, anchor points, and handles lesson. So if you need to go back and watch that, go ahead. So I'm going to choose Shift C, and that will give me the cursor that looks like a little upside down V. And now click on the anchor point and drag it to the right. And you can see here that I'm changing that 
corner anchor point to a smooth anchor point. So I'm just going to drag it a little bit, and then I'm also going to drag this one as well. This basically shows us how to get a curved line, and then we can actually type on this line. So go over here and choose that type on a path tool and click the left side here. And you can see again, it filled it with lorem ipsum text. I'm going to change this one again to Charlie and Bo, and I'm going to do vacation squad. Now you can see that I've lost some of my text. You can't see it because it is off the path. So I'm going to choose command A or control A to select all of the text in this type on a path text box. So it selected what you can see here as well as what you can't see. And now I can go ahead and move the size of this font down. And I realized I'm centered here. I'm actually going to change this to being left aligned. Um, so that everything fits. So now you can see I've got Vacation Squad here on my curved line. You can see how you can create some really interesting movement in your text using this pen tool and this type on a path tool. You can even go in there using that direct selection tool, which is keyboard shortcut A. And if I click on an anchor point, I can move it around a little bit and that will move my text here. So maybe I want to bring this out a little bit or bring this up or make this a little taller, make this a little wider. You can see how I can really manipulate that path so that I can get exactly what I want. You can also pull these handles. So maybe I wanted this to be rounder here. And if I wanted to pull this one so that it's really coming down here, manipulating these handles and anchor points really can help you get a very unique look that you wouldn't be able to get otherwise. Next up, let's talk ligatures. Ligatures are letter forms that combine two or more letters into a single letter form to make them more aesthetically pleasing. So you can see here that I have pulled a bunch of different ligatures from this particular font. These are designed within the font by the font designer. So some fonts have ligatures and some don't. You can see up here in this first example that the F runs into the dot on the I in a very unappealing way. So instead, the font designer has created a wider F here that turns into the dot on the I. Really lovely. Same thing here down with this T. These two T's run into each other, creating sort of this ugly little gap. So the font designer has created a single letter form for two T's that just goes all the way across. It's really nice. Sometimes ligatures get a little fancy. So this R and the A, they don't look bad together, but when you combine them into a single letter form, they're really elegant. Same here with this S and M. They look okay sitting next to each other, but together just really elegant. This W and the I, very awkward. So this ligature makes that dot on the I part of the W. Now, where do we find ligatures? So remember at the beginning of this video where I talked about using that open type menu, I'm going to click on open type over here. And ligatures are actually in these icons at the bottom. So if I select one of these text boxes I have created here, you can see here, if I hover over this third icon, it says discretionary ligatures. You can turn them on and off. So if I select an actual ligature here, so I'm selecting this F and I, you can see that it is selected. I'm going to click on it and it turns the ligature off and just gives me my regular F and I. But if I click on it and it turns it on, then I have that beautiful F and I. The first box is for standard ligatures, which are basically the same thing. It really depends on how the font designer designed the font, whether or not they're calling them standard ligatures or discretionary ligatures. So some fonts may have one, some fonts may have the other, and some fonts may have both. You just need to know that you can turn them on and off using the first icon down here for standard ligatures and the second icon for discretionary ligatures. An example might be maybe you don't want this really elegant RA. Maybe you just need this very standard RA. I can go and I can just turn it off and have what I need. Related to ligatures are glyphs. Now, glyphs are basically all of the letter forms in a font, and ligatures are a type of glyph. In addition to ligatures, fonts may have alternate glyphs where you get swashes or swirls or different shapes of letters um, to make your designs more interesting and unique. So right now I have the word wanderlust. It's in a beautiful but pretty boring font for an SVG. So let's go ahead and add some interest to this word using glyphs. So there are two ways to use glyphs. The slightly harder way is to click glyphs over here. This should be in your panels menu because we added it in the first lesson. If it's not, you can go up here to window type and then choose glyphs. So I'm going to go ahead and click on glyphs. And this is all of the letter forms in the entire font. This includes these basic letter forms. It includes numbers, punctuation, symbols, plus all of these letter forms that have little swashes and curls that are really pretty. So let's select the first letter here. And then you can go down and try and find the W that you want. Some of the times they are in order. Sometimes they are not. Um, one thing you can do is use this drop down and choose alternates for current selection. And that will give you the 
the only the W's, which is nice. 99% of the time this is coded properly, but every once in a while you'll have a bunch of W's and then like three F's and you're like, why did the, they code it like that? It's just been coded incorrectly in the font design. So then if I double click on this W here, it will change my first W here to the W with that little swash. So that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is to just select the font, and you may have noticed that I have a bunch of different options down here at the bottom below the font. So I have that original W that I was using, or I could click that swash. Now let's go ahead and change some of these to different letter forms here. You can see how easy it is to choose different letter forms. Maybe an L, yeah, that's nice. And a T, nope, oh, I'm gonna close this glyph panel because I can't see what I'm doing. And maybe like that. Now, I don't love how this S and the T run into each other, so I'm going to give it a different option here, maybe that one. And here, if I compare the two, you can see that the first one, pretty but very boring. The second one has so much more interest because we use those glyphs. Finally, I want to talk a little bit about manipulating individual letters at an anchor point level. So this is a little bit more advanced, but you can come up with some really, really cool SVGs using these techniques. So right now I have love in one text box, will keep us in another and warm in a third. I'm gonna go ahead and select all and hit create outlines. Now again, I have love, will keep us and warm separately. Now we get into the nitty gritty. I am going to zoom way in because we are going to be dealing with those anchor points. So I'm gonna choose my direct selection tool, which is A, and I'm going to choose this uh, K, or yeah, K from keep. Now you can see I've got some anchor points here. Now, if I select and drag over these four anchor points, only those four anchor points will move. Now I want to drag this all the way out, but I really don't like how this is looking here. So I'm going to add anchor points. And I talked about this in the anchor points lesson. So I'm gonna click the plus sign and I'm just gonna add a couple extra anchor points here. And again, this is more advanced, but I wanted to just show you what's possible. Then I'm going to select my direct selection tool again, which is A, and I'm just gonna select those two that I made and the front two. So I'm leaving these two anchor points where they were. I was dragging those before. Zoom out a little bit here. And now I can drag these four under here as like a line under keep us. That's pretty cool, right? I can do that to a lot of different things. Because this E doesn't have a curve, I can just sort of select the top part of it and drag it up just a little bit. I'm gonna go over here to Will. I'm gonna select just some anchor points at the bottom of the eye, drag them down to give it a little bounce. I'm going to take this L and move it up just a little bit here and take the whole bottom of this L and move it down. Maybe even move it down a little bit more to kind of sit inside warm. Now again, I want to have this R come down, so I'm going to zoom in a lot more here. I'm gonna add those two extra anchor points right next to the other one. So I'm selecting the correct anchor points here and I'm gonna drag this across. I can zoom out just here. Let's see what else. I don't love how this L is kind of lining up here. So I'm going to choose my regular selection tool with V and I'm gonna move it up and choose that direct selection tool with A and just drag this over a little bit, kind of fun. Maybe I'll pull this V up as well, just a little bit, give it a little. Sometimes you're like, eh, this doesn't look right. Sometimes if you zoom in, it can help. Just a little bit, just like that. Now you can compare what we started with up here, looks fine, with what I have down here, looks really unique. Nobody else is going to edit it in the same way you are when you get like deep into those anchor points. It's going to be completely yours. I know this is a little bit advanced, but being able to go in and manipulate those anchor points and handles means that you will be able to make minute changes, um, especially if maybe you're having a problem, something just doesn't look right, you don't like the way a letter looks, you may wanna change it just slightly, you can go in there and actually do that, which is really cool. This is one of those things that takes a lot of practice, but it is definitely worth learning. All right, I hope you found all of those different tips, tricks, techniques helpful for increasing the ways that you can use fonts in your SVG design. I wanted to thank all of you who left feedback on the video last week, letting me know that I am going at an okay pace for you. Um, I would love to know how you are doing. Just let me know in the comments. Are these videos working for you? Are you learning? I just wanna make sure that these are as helpful as possible as you learn Adobe Illustrator. And if you did find this video helpful, I would really appreciate you giving it a like. Follow my channel for more Cricut, Sublimation, Laser, and Illustrator content. I'll see you next week.